My name is Leah Hartman. I am an Intuit product consultant. I work, um, I've been with Intuit for six and a half years. And uh, thank you, Stephanie, for, uh, for letting me know that you can hear me. That's awesome. Um, my name is Leah Hartman, <clears throat> as I've already told you. And uh, today we're going to be going through QuickBooks Online Basics for accountants. So we're going to be starting from the very beginning. And so kind of get your, your, uh, yourselves grounded in QuickBooks Online Accountant, what it is, what it does, how you can manage clients and all that good stuff. So feel free to ask questions if you have any. And um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started here. Let me just verify. All right. So um, in case you guys wanted to know, this is what my pretty face looks like. I am a uh, certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I have been certified in online for the last four years. Um, I've been an employee uh, since 2012 here in the bright and sunny Tucson, Arizona, um, where it's currently 73 degrees as a high which is insane for this time of year. Usually it gets up in the 90s. If you guys want to follow me on LinkedIn, please go ahead and follow the, uh, the LinkedIn um, URL. You guys will also notice in the handouts section of GoToWebinar, the same exact PDF uh, file that I am, uh, excuse me, PowerPoint that I am using is also there for you to save and use for further use. You will also be emailed a recording of this at the end. If you guys have any questions, you can obviously uh, email me at any given time, but at your own discretion. All right, so today we are going to be going over what is QuickBooks Online Accountant? What are the benefits of the cloud? How you sign up for QBOA if you haven't already or how to accept an invitation? Navigation basics, how to add a new client. The differences between subscription levels, there's a couple. Um, uh, the payroll options available in QuickBooks Online. What is QuickBooks Self-Employed? And then, of course, accessing your client's data. So we'll be getting a little sneak peek at the very end of some uh, demos live inside of QBOA, which we call for short QuickBooks Online Accountant, in case you didn't know, and uh, all that good stuff. All right, so let's get on in there. We've got a lot to cover in one hour. And if anyone that wants to know, just for clarification, thank you so much for being here with me today, but this is not CPE covered. So I do apologize about that. We do not offer CPE for this session. All right, so what is QuickBooks Online Accountant? So uh, QuickBooks Online Accountant, or QBOA, is your one-stop shop for running your accounting practice in the cloud, right? So it's on-the-go uh, uh, excuse me, on-the-go access. So you can work with clients' books in real time right from your dashboard, right? So it's kind of like Facebook. You, right, you log into Facebook.com on your computer or on your phone or on your iPad, wherever it is, and you have the ability to uh, access it right then and there. You have clear priorities, so you know which clients need your attention with automatic notifications. So when we say automatic notifications, we're talking about what's available for you right when you log in, what you need to see that needs to be done or reviewed right um, in that client's file. And you also have the ability to collaborate with your team. So your team is going to be the folks who work for your accounting firm, right? So you can work together easily in a single client list. And you do have the ability to customize those lists per team member. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then a single workflow. So complete all of your tax and accounting tasks in one convenient place. So not only do you have the ability to help clients with their accounting, you can also help them with taxes, right? So if you are a, a tax accountant as well, you can also implement that into this particular dashboard. All really, really good stuff, right? So that's what QuickBooks Online Accountant is. I just want to... Uh, kind of end that piece with a quick uh, uh, statistic. 78% of small businesses will be moving online by 2020. So for folks who are hesitant to move, I get it, right? You guys uh, you guys are familiar with, uh, we, we usually like to um, uh, go back to those desktop users, right? QuickBooks desktop. We know you guys love your QuickBooks desktop. And believe me, I would know. My father's been working it into it since 1999, and he is also a desktop lover. <laughs> so um, we, uh, we kind of go into the feuds of um, is desktop or online better? And I can tell you, the industry is just changing, right? And so everybody wants to be mobile. Everybody wants to be um, on the go, and they want their data um, right at the access at their fingertips. And so... Um, it's just one of those things. You're either proactive or reactive when it comes to changing in the industry, right? So um, we're here to help you guys with that change and that move. So benefits of the cloud. So anytime, anywhere access. I talked a little bit about this already. Flexibility to sign in from anywhere with an internet connection. No hosting service required. For folks who are, 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 uh, are known or, or used to having to deal with hosting services, it can get kind of pricey, especially if there's lots of users or 
multiple people that have to sign in at the same time, right? Um, Right Networks is a hosting service that we work with directly uh, for QuickBooks Desktop. And uh, folks who use it, they know it can be, get pretty expensive. Access account from any device, including your laptop, your smartphone, or your tablet. So with QuickBooks Online Accountant, you can access it from almost any platform that has internet. And um, it's there. It's available for you. It's live. It's not a, a backup or anything like that. And then PC and Mac users have the same experience. So for those of you who know uh, about QuickBooks Mac, the desktop version, um, that user interface is completely different than the Windows version. And so with the online world, you don't have to worry about it, right? Because it's all in the cloud, so it's the same user experience. Super helpful when you're working with clients, especially if one has a Mac and the other one has a Windows. You don't have to worry about user interface issues. Super cool. Improved collaboration. So multiple users can be logged in at the same time. Now I understand that QuickBooks Desktop can do that as well, but you do, of course, have to pay for it. And you have to set up um, uh, multi-location mode, I think it's called. And so you do have the, the ability to do that. However, this is automatically built into the cloud, right? So it's just being able to sign in at the exact same time, making real-time updates with somebody who's not necessarily in the other room, right? They could be across the country if needed. Uh, clients can also invite their accountant, right, which is you guys, allowing them to access your books to answer questions, fix problems, and get you ready for tax time. So instead of having to get a backup file for, um, you know, at the end of the year that you'll have to prepare for taxes, if you have access all year round, you can make sure everything stays up to date, you know, a little bit here and there, so there's less time that you have to do making fixes at the end of the year. So it's pretty helpful for you guys too, right? Saves you guys time and stress. No need to transfer sensitive data back and forth. So I know that there's got to be some folks that are in this webinar that are very familiar with accountants copy file transfer. And I'm going to tell you, I've never had someone call into customer support and tell me that they loved it, <laughs> right? So there's no need to transfer data, right? So um, you don't need to necessarily um, worry about moving data from one you know, location to another. The data is all in one place in the cloud. And so it's super helpful for you to be able to access the, uh, the, the, the data together. Preventing unauthorized access. So login credentials for your cloud accounting software enable only designated people to view and access your financial information. So we know that the big thing these days is security, right? And so we take that very seriously. So as long as everyone has their own login and their own password, then you know for a fact that nobody else is trying to access that data that's not supposed to. We have also implemented multi-factor authentication across all of our products to protect your data. To safe storage, right? So data is routinely backed up to servers in multiple locations. So you guys don't ever have to worry about data damage or anything like that, right? Especially with the online world, it's there. Once you make the save, it's there. There's no physical hard drives or computers containing sensitive data that can be stolen. And some financial information isn't kept on premise so that the risks of fire and natural disasters are also mitigated. I will just put in a brief um, tidbit here. Last year, I got the opportunity to go to Houston, Texas, right after Hurricane Harvey in October, and um, help folks who had this issue. Some of the folks were using QuickBooks Desktop, and they lost their computers. And so we were helping them try to retrieve their hard drives, helping them install QuickBooks Desktop on their new computers, and then working with them on how they can better uh, save their data for the future, um, not necessarily just in one location or two or whatever, but maybe even in the cloud, right? So this kind of thing doesn't happen again. So. This is something that we, we do we do worry about. We do it's 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 top of mind, absolutely. Um, you know, but keeping in mind when you're working in the cloud, you don't have to worry about that because the data is already in the cloud. But it was an awesome experience. Um, everyone was super thankful that we were that we were there last year, and we were just gathering information on how we can help in the future, help you guys through through those kinds of things. Seamless sync. So cloud accounting software does the heavy lifting, so you can spend your time on other important business tasks. Automatically sync your bank account so you don't have to manually import transactions or verify expenses. Now, I will tell you, I am a little biased. <laughs> I believe that the bank feeds within QuickBooks Online is a little bit better than the QuickBooks desktop uh, bank feeds. Now, they do essentially do the same thing, um, but again, I, I, I personally feel that some of the the features and benefits of the bank feeds are a little bit better. Um, and then connected apps seamlessly sync data, so no need for import, export, or manual entry. So the way that we like to look at it in the online world, right, the cloud world, QBO, think of QuickBooks Online as your iPhone. 
Okay, your iPhone is going to be different than, say, your friend's iPhone or your husband or wife's iPhone, right? And based off of your needs and based off of what it is that you prefer to do, you're going to have different apps downloaded onto your iPhone versus, say, your friend or your husband or your wife. So QuickBooks Online is the core. Right, And so we have also have an open API platform that allows you to be able to add applications that either pulls in data or exports data depending on what it is that needs to be done or completed inside the books. But it allows you to be able to add on these third-party applications to make it even better for you and your client, right? So um, it kind of opens up a whole world of, you know, uh, opportunities for you to be successful and, and not have to worry about doing um, data entry all day long for your clients, right? So something to think about, right? QuickBooks Online is the core app, and then you have the ability to add on based off of your client's needs. And so we do have that ability as well. So something to think about when you're thinking about moving to the cloud. And if you've done so already, congrats, you've made the first step. <laughs> and then paying as you grow, right? So no long-term commitments. Uh, SaaS solutions are often monthly subscriptions with various service levels like QBO, right? like your clients. Purchase what you need today knowing you can expand as needed. Also keep in mind that not only can you expand, but you can um, get smaller if needed too. So you do have the ability to um, upgrade or downgrade QuickBooks Online if needed. So your clients, if they do accidentally get something that's too much for them or they don't need it, they can absolutely downgrade. Um, and this can include adding more users, advanced features, and additional tools. I talked about the apps a little bit already, right, those third-party applications. So great benefits of being able to use the cloud, right? Some of the things that I like to point out, again, are uh, – Signing in at the exact same time, real-time access, right? There's no backup files. There's no account copy file transfers. There's no um, need for hosting. It's all there, right? Um, you have the ability to pay as you grow. So if you need to start small and work your way big, you can. Or if you already know what you need, you can, you can get what you need right now. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so signing up for QuickBooks Online Accountant, if you have not done so already, there's two ways that you can do this, okay? The first way is that you're going to be signing up at quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash accountants forward slash online. Now, again, I do have this PowerPoint deck in the handouts section, so if you do download that, you should be able to click on that hyperlink, and it'll take you directly to that, um, to that website. And I just took this screenshot today, so it should be um, up to date <laughs> as far as how it looks. And you'll notice that green button, sign up, it's always free. So when you click on the sign up, always free button, the next thing that you guys are going to see is sign up for QuickBooks Online Accountant. First thing is you're going to make sure you're in the correct region. Please keep in mind that if you are in the U.S., you are only going to be working with U.S.-based QuickBooks Online companies. If you're in Canada, you will only be working in Canada companies, QuickBooks Online companies. There's no way to, um, to work with Canada companies inside of a U.S. QuickBooks Online accountant, if that makes sense. So just make sure you're signing up in the right region. The next thing that you're going to do is, is you're either going to create a user ID or if you already use an Intuit product such as TurboTax, or self-employed or anything like that, then you can use the sign-in option where you already have an Intuit account. Otherwise, you're going to fill out the rest of this information, your, your email address, your first name, your last name. You're going to enter in a phone number, and then you're going to do a password. And of course, at the very bottom, I know every single one of you checks that box. I would like to receive marketing emails. Ha, just kidding. OK. <laughs> You'll fill out the info here, OK? So those are going to be the two ways to do it. You either sign in or you fill out the information regarding your email address and your, your password. Make sense? Awesome. Then the next step is, is it's going to ask you to enter in your firm's information. Again, this is if you're brand new to QuickBooks Online Account and you haven't signed up yet. Your free account is almost ready. It's just going to ask for a couple more things, right? So accounting firm name, the zip code that you're located in, and the number of small business clients that you currently have. You could ballpark it, guys. This just doesn't have to, it's not rocket science. Okay. When you click finish, it's going to do its little magic. It's going to it's going to work its its magic in, and then it's going to go ahead and sign you up, 
Welcome to QBOA. This is what the dashboard looks like, okay? So you'll know that you're in. You'll be able to start working. It'll talk to you about how to get organized, discovering key features, how you can add clients, etc. The alternative way to sign up for QBOA is if your client invites you as an accountant user before you have QuickBooks Online accountant. So when your client logs in, to their QuickBooks Online. They're basically going to go to the, actually, you know what? Let me jump in really quick. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. So when you're, oh, whoops, maybe I should learn how to spell. And we're going to talk about the sign-in page here uh, a little bit later, so bear with me. I'm just going to sign in. So um, the second way that you can get access to QuickBooks Online Accountant is if your client invites you as an accountant user. And so I'm going to just show you what it looks like. So I'm logging in as a client. So this is the client's QuickBooks Online subscription, right? So I'm the client. This is my home page. Now the client just simply needs to go to the gear icon in the upper right-hand corner. And then there's an option for manage users under your company. When they click on Manage Users, they're going to see two sections. They're going to see Manage Users up here at the top, and then they're going to see Accounting Firm down here at the bottom. So all they have to do is simply click Invite Accountant. And of course, I've got pop-up blockers. That's never helpful. You'll run into that too if you have those issues, but we do have other webinars that can help you avoid those, um, those issues if you do run into them. But they simply just click the Invite Accountant option, and they're going to fill out your email address, and then you will be prompted to fill out the, the invitation when you get that email. And so that's the second way that you can sign up for QBOA. So first option is go to the website, sign up for free. The second way to do it is if your client uh, prompts the invitation by sending you an email. Make sense? When you do get the email, on the right-hand side uh, of my screenshot, you'll notice that it says, Leah Hartman has invited you to access their books as an accountant user through QBOA. You click Accept Invite, and it'll walk you through the same process as the similar, similar to the first page of accepting the invite, either creating uh, a new user ID or using an existing one that's in our system already. Make sense? Awesome. Now, navigation. So we're just going to talk about simple navigation here um, through the dashboard, through the portal. So how do you access QBOA? So you guys probably already saw me uh, just now do it already. Signing in is pretty easy. Both accountants and clients sign in to the same website, so there's no confusion. QBO.intuit.com. MFA authentication with a text or an email is required if it is the first time you are signing in to that web browser um, and or computer, right? So MFA authentication is um, either you'll get a six-digit code texted or emailed to you to confirm that you are who you say you are. That's why it's really important when you are signing up for QBOA to put in that mobile number where it asks you for the mobile number because then you'll get that text message code. If you're interested in test driving or checking out QuickBooks Online, you can go to the test drive, the sample drive, accounting.quickbooks.com forward slash reader forward slash test drive. Again, it is in the handout, so you should be able to um, access it. Or if you're like me, I Google everything. You could just simply go to a new tab in your Google and just type in QBO test drive, and you'll be able to find it that way too. QBO test drive, first one at the very top. Okay, awesome. So, uh, but again, I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a big Google fan, so I like to do that. But you can also access the sample drive if you guys want to check it out, see how you like it, all that good stuff. Basic QBOA navigation. When you sign in and you finally have access to some clients, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. Now, I realize that the screenshot is kind of small, but I will log into my dashboard and I will give you guys a, a little bit of a closer look as to what you can see and all that good stuff. Number one, we've got our left 
panel to access menus for your practice and for your books. So you'll see that there's two sections. There's your practice and then there's your books. Every QuickBooks Online Accounting Firm comes with a free set of your books, which allows you to manage your firm's bookkeeping, right? So not your clients, but your own bookkeeping as a firm. You have the ability to use it. It's free. It's QuickBooks Online Plus, and it also comes with payroll for free, whether you use full service or the do-it-yourself. So pretty cool. You have the ability to manage your firm's books in the your book section. Now, anything above your books is going to be associated with your practice. So you've got your clients, you've got your team members, you've got your pro advisor, the work tab. Your work tab is going to be uh, practice management for the firm, right? So it allows you to be able to um, delegate who does what for which client. Pretty cool stuff. And then, of course, apps. We talked a little bit about third-party applications um, earlier, and uh, you have the ability to also access apps there as well. Go to Clients QuickBooks. At the very top in the green bar is where you'll be, have the ability to toggle into a client QBO company. So you'll have the ability to either click on that drop down there, or if you're like me, I'm a visual person, you'll notice under the client's name, there's a QB meet ball under status. You can also click on that and it'll take you to your client's files as well. Little tidbit. Number three, your firm slash accountant name. So this gives you the name of the firm that you're working in if you do work for several different firms. And then there's also the number of clients you have access to. So for me, I have 44 clients that I am currently um, subjected to working on, depending on what, what it is that I need to do. Add client number four. So this is where you can sign up a client for QuickBooks Online if you have permission. This is new clients, clients that do not have QBO yet. Okay. And then we've got the gear menu, number five. Gear menu is right next to the add client button. It's for QBOA account management where you can access wholesale billing. You can access company settings and all that good stuff. And to the right of that is number six, your ProAdvisor profile. It's the little icon that's got the little person. And um, that's where you can manage your listing on the Find a ProAdvisor marketplace. If you guys are not sure what the ProAdvisor uh, 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 Pro um, profile is or if you want to learn more, we do have additional webinars if you're, if you're interested. Um, but basically, as a, a QBOA user, we also give you free marketing. So you can take a test, you can become certified in our products, and then you can market yourselves online on our Find a Poor Advisor Marketplace, and that allows small businesses who use QBO in your area to find you and ask for help if needed. So not required, it is optional if you guys would like to use it. But it is there. That's where you can access your profile. And then, of course, the help, the question mark on the far right-hand side in that green bar. It's uh, help info for U.S.-based ProAdvisor chat slash phone support. And also, bit, depending on your level of service, you'll be able to see if you, can, if you have a number to call or if you want to chat in. Or um, you can also search for help articles in there as well um, and see uh, what status you are. There are different status levels of the ProAdvisor membership that you can have, gold, silver, or diamond. I did that backwards, it's silver, gold, or diamond. Uh, it just depends on how many paying clients that you have or how many certifications you have, et cetera. So cool stuff, a lot of information that's available for you. So if we were to click on the name of the client, right? So for example, if you'll notice in my client list, I have a client named Planet Paws Pet Shop and Boarding. If I were to click on the name of that particular client, then it's going to Oh, shoot, I just, I, I got ahead of myself. Hang on. So, <laughs> excuse me, we're still on the dashboard. Silly me. So we're still on the client list. So this is the dashboard view of QBO, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Self-Employed, and uh, PTO, uh, ProTax Online Clients, and an accountant has access to. So if, <clears throat> excuse me, if your client has provisioned you access to their data, then you'll see it here listed on your client list, all right? So things that you can review all uh, in one place. Things like the client name and their phone number, uh, notes, the status of their subscription, who last signed in and when, close, closing books. So there's a feature inside of QBO that allows you to close the books. Um, items that are to be reviewed, last banking download, so that kind of ties into the bank feeds. And then of course, payroll. If they're using QBOP or QBFSP, 
which are the two different options of payroll, which we will talk about later, that, um, that your clients can use inside of QBO. And then, of course, the tax section. Now, again, not everybody does tax. Totally fine. These are not all things that you have to use. These are just items that are available to utilize in a one-stop shop setting. Now, kind of like I talked about earlier, you'll notice under the status column, there's that QB meatball. Clicking on that QB icon opens the client's QBO or their self-employed company, as well as using the go-to-clients QuickBooks in the upper left, whatever you prefer. Now, if we were to click on the name of the client, you'll notice here I've got this arrow pointing to Planet Pause, Pet Shop, and Boarding. If I were to click on the name of that particular client, it doesn't necessarily take me to the client's file, but it does take me into the client's detail page where I've got more information about this client's file um, without being inside their, their, their data just yet. So things you can view more of, their contact information, there's notes, their status, their subscription level, who last signed in, who has access to this particular client file, items that need to be reviewed, um, more in-depth on their uh, account information, so account watch list, the last time they were reconciled, changes that were made, um, uh, anything that's payroll related, account balances, reconciliation status, all kinds of detailed information on this particular client is available for you to see here on this page. Um, so that's by clicking on the name of the client. Now something to keep in mind if you are on this page and you want to be able to access the client's um, books, you don't have to go backwards. You can click on any items that are in the review now section on the right hand side will take you to the client's books. So rather than having to go backwards, you'll be able to click on what it is that you want to access from here, and it'll take you to the client's book. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the team page, which is uh, where you can invite users that are associated with the firm, right? Your firm that works for you. So on this particular page, to get back to the, uh, to the, the dashboard here, we're going to click on the arrow in the upper left-hand corner, and that takes us back to our dashboard, right? Now, the team page is located in the upper left under your practice. Team is located, excuse me, is located here. When I click on team, this is where the firm manages their staff. This is not where you're going to be inviting clients. No, no. This is for the staff of the firm, okay? The team is the staff of the accounting firm. In this page, you can invite team users. You can edit team users. You can assign access to client companies. And then you can assign permissions for firm books and administrative tasks. You can mark team members inactive if needed. So if you've got folks who um, are seasonal or let's say they are no longer working with you, you can mark them inactive so they can no longer access the firm or any of the clients associated. So you can also do that as well. And then, of course, the option to transfer master admin of the QuickBooks Online Accountant dashboard is uh, a feasible or necessary if needed through this section here as well. There is no limit to the number of team users in QBOA. So if you've got a big team, a big firm that needs everyone to have their own access, by all means, go at it, have fun. It's very important that everybody has their own login and their own password. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, for liability purposes, right? So if I've got Laura who comes in and signs in with someone else's login, I'm not going to know who made the changes inside of the client's files, right? So it's really important that everyone has their own login and password. Number two, every user has their own free ProAdvisor membership. So every user that's a team member will have the ability to go into the ProAdvisor profile take that test, become certified, and then market themselves online if they wanted to, right? So then that makes the firm look even better when there's 10 team members that are, you know, certified in the ProAdvisor membership, right? So something to think about. So liability, right? Holding your firm members accountable for the changes that they've made inside client files. Uh, security, obviously, is a big one. I didn't point that out, but we all know that's that's a thing, security. And then, of course, the ProAdvisor membership. Everyone gets their own profile. So really important that everyone signs in with their own users. Okay, now, if you click Add User, it's a simple, simple process, right? Add Team User, where the firm adds their staff members. So um, there's three-step process. The first thing it's going to ask is for some simple contact information, user profile information, email address, first name, and last name. The second thing is it's going to ask firm administration and books. 
So you have the ability to dictate if this team member is going to have full access to the firm where they can also access your books, or if they're just going to be able to access the client team page that's associated with the clients that they're going to be working with. So you do have the ability to assign full basic or custom permissions to the firm and administration and books. And then the last section, step three, is going to be client access. So which clients are they going to be working on? They do not have to have access to all of the clients that are associated with the firm. If they're only working on one or two clients, only give them access to those one or two clients. And then hit save. And they'll be prompted by an email to finish accepting the invitation. Please keep in mind, granting access to a client gives the team member full permissions to that client's QuickBooks Online file. Every accountant user has full admin permissions to a client's file. They're basically, uh, they're basically uh, company administrators, so they can do anything and everything inside of the client file. But again, there's an audit trail, so there's always breadcrumbs as far as, hey, what did you do? Keep that in mind. OK. Make sense? Awesome. I'm going to take a moment here. I know that there was a question. Let's see here. If you are starting your own business and haven't decided on your own business name yet, can your accounting firm name be changed somewhere? Yes, Jennifer, you can change the business name in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Absolutely. It's going to be under that gear icon in the upper right-hand corner in that green bar, and then it's under company settings. From there, you'll be able to update that business name. Great question. You're very welcome. Okay, I don't have any other questions. If you guys feel that you need to ask questions as we're going along, please feel free. I will, um, I will jump in and, and, um, and answer them as I can, since I'm the only one in here um, doing the admin stuff. <laughs> um, okay, next thing that we want to talk about is how to add clients to your dashboard. So if you guys don't have any clients yet, this is how we're going to be able to do it. There's two different ways to add clients to your dashboard. The first way is for a brand new client who has never used QuickBooks Online. You guys will notice, we talked a little bit about this before, if you go to the plus sign in the upper right hand corner, it's right next to the gear icon, there's an option for create client. You just simply click on create client and on the right hand side it walks you through uh, how to create that brand new QBO subscription or QuickBooks self-employed subscription depending on what you're looking for. So pretty simple. Again, client has never used QBO. An example would be you have a client who's got QuickBooks desktop and you're planning on moving them to QBO. They do not have a QuickBooks online subscription just yet. So you're going to create one for them and once that subscription is created then you'll be able to import their QuickBooks desktop data into the online one. Make sense? Okay. The next option for you guys to be able to um, add a client to your dashboard is if the client is already using QuickBooks Online and you need to access their data. So you're going to ask the client to log into their QuickBooks Online and this is how you're going to have them navigate. They're going to go to the gear icon in the upper right hand corner and then they're going to choose manage users. They're going to make sure that they click invite accountant at the bottom in blue where I've got the little red circle and then they will need your email address you use to sign up for QBOA and then you will accept the invitation via email. So that's going to be the second way for you guys to get clients on your dashboard. Once you've done that, either option one or two, or maybe both, maybe you've got new clients and existing QBO clients. Who knows? It's awesome. But once you've done that, now you can see your clients from your dashboard, and you'll be able to see the list. You'll be able to filter that list based off of what it is that you're looking for, et cetera. So then you'll be able to see all of your clients. Pretty cool stuff, right? I'm excited, just saying. <laughs> All right, moving right along. So the next thing I want to talk about is this QBO subscription levels. What is available for you to be able to hook up to your QuickBooks Online Accountant dashboard, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to go through is, is I'm going to go through QuickBooks Online service levels. So these are going to be for sole proprietors, LLCs, partnerships, corporations, nonprofits, and more. So these are going to be businesses, small businesses, right? Um, simple start. It's our very, very smallest, littlest version of QuickBooks Online that you can get, okay? It only allows for one user, 
And that user is going to be the owner of the business. And then um, two bookkeeper slash accounting firms by invitation, okay? So this is where the client would have to sign up manually for Simple Start through the QuickBooks.com site. And then they would have to invite the accounting firm um, in order for you to see it on your dashboard, okay? There's an unlimited number of estimates and invoices. So you can track expenses and print, print checks, but there's no AP function. So there's no bill or bill payment function. So the way that I think about this is, is this is only tracking AR. This is only tracking accounts receivable. There's no accounts payable, okay? So it's very one-sided. But again, simple start, not a lot of people need AP or accounts payable, right? You have the ability to connect bank accounts. You can track vendors for 1099. This is actually a new feature, which is pretty awesome because it used to only be available in Plus. So big win, yay. Payroll add-on. It's optional. They're not required, but you can choose full service or do it yourself, depending on what the client wants. And there's about 20-ish reports. So that's Simple Start. Okay. Again, if a client is brand new and wants Simple Start, the client has to sign up for Simple Start outside of QuickBooks Online Accountant at the website and then they can invite you as a firm, okay? This is not a, something that you can create within QBOA, unfortunately. Um, make sense? All right. The next level of QBO that's available is Essentials. So it's got everything Simple Start has, so 1099 tracking, payroll add-ons, optional. But this one comes with three users. So three users would be clients, right, the client users. So maybe it's the owner of the business plus two employees. And then two bookkeeper slash accounting firms, which would be you guys, and unlimited time tracking only users. So um, time tracking is available in Essentials now. So now they can also add uh, time tracking only users um, inside of the manage user screen. So that's pretty cool. User access control. So since there's more users available for the clients, they have the ability to choose what kind of level of access that they want to have. Manage and pay bills from vendors. So that's the account payable portion of what Simple Start didn't have. The delayed charges and credits are also available. The option to turn on multi-currency is, 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 is available as well. And then reoccurring transactions. And you'll see that the reports have now doubled. It's about 40 plus reports available in the essentials. So this is the middle version, okay? QuickBooks Online Essentials. The highest version of QuickBooks Online is Plus, okay? Everything in Simple Start in Essentials and includes, not only, um, five users included can expand up to 25 if needed. Then you've got your two accountants and book slash bookkeeping firms. And then um, it also includes time tracking unlimited report users only and unlimited reports only users, okay? So the Plus version has got all of the bells and whistles. So unlimited reports only users, unlimited time tracking only users. It's got the two bookkeeper slash accounting firms and then the five users that can expand up to 25. People who need plus are going to be folks who need class or location tracking, which is just another way to class or track items that they need to do reporting on. Uh, POs. POs is really important for a lot of those big um, inventory uh, um, or maybe service-based companies, and then um, FIFO inventory. So in case you don't know what FIFO means, it means first in, first out valuation, be able to track profitability with two-sided items. Um, you can also do billable time and expenses and budgets. And as you can see, uh, QuickBooks Online Plus has the highest level of reporting, which is 65 plus. Okay, so uh, most of the folks that are going to be using Plus are going to be folks who are heavy on inventory and um, need those other items like budgeting and purchase orders and all that good stuff. Keep in mind, as a QuickBooks Online Accountant user, you do have the ability to uh, provide discounts to your clients. How you want to do that is totally up to you, but... For folks who are not familiar with QuickBooks Online Accountant, you do have the ability to move clients to what's called wholesale billing, which gives them a discount on their subscriptions. You as the accountant would pay for it, but the clients could get those benefits by either you telling them, hey, I pay this amount, you can pay this amount to me, it's cheaper, or you can build it into a monthly fee that you charge them, or et cetera. So it really depends on how you guys want to do it, but Wholesale billing is available for you guys as well. When we get to the actual demo piece towards the end, I will show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. 
Now, we talked about QuickBooks Online subscriptions. We're going to talk about the add-on options for QuickBooks Online, okay? So these are add-on options, optional. They're not required. But if you do have somebody who uses, um, who needs payroll to pay employees, they can do that. There's two different options. Option number one is online enhanced or DIY, do it yourself. Supports all 50 states. You have the ability to print paychecks or use free direct deposit for W-2 employees. You can pay your federal 941 and 944s and 940 taxes. You can file them electronically. You can pay state taxes and file forms electronically where available. Or we'll create printer-ready forms, coupons, worksheets, whatever the state's. Every state's different. They all call them different things. It's kind of funny. We support multi-state. So you work in one state and you've got an out-of-state employee that works from home. We support that totally. No tax impounding. So we're not gonna we're not gonna do any of that tax and pounding nonsense. Employees can view their pay subs online. You can create W twos and file electronically at the end of the year, and it's accessible from a browser, iPad, iPhone, Android. Wholesale discount through QBOA. So kind of what we talked about already. There's an option for you to get incentives to your clients by getting a discount through QBOA. So you can do that with the payroll. This is do it yourself. So either you as the accountant are going to be running the payroll for the client, or the client's going to be doing it. So the way that I look at it is, is um, they're going to have to run the payroll however often that they that they run payroll, whether it's biweekly, weekly, monthly, or whatever. They're going to have to, you know, go through the motions of doing that every time, and then they're going to have to physically click pay taxes, file forms whenever those are ready and due. Okay, so those are all do it yourself. So um, we'll we'll calculate the forms, and we'll make sure that the calculations are correct based off of the the employees. Um, like W-4s and all that good stuff, but um, you still have to physically go through the motions of, you know, going through all that. So DIY. Make sense? The other option that's available is QuickBooks Online Full Service Payroll. And the biggest thing here is, is we do everything for you. It's called Do It For You, D-I-F-Y. Client submits payroll. We file and pay payroll taxes on their behalf. When we say we, we mean Intuit. Also, for full service, Intuit is liable for mistakes and mess ups. So if we mess up something um, on the form, then we have to pay the penalty, not the client. Okay. So full service really is a benefit if it's something that you are not comfortable with as a firm or the clients, like I don't know what to do. Full service is a great option. Of course, it's going to cost more because we are doing it for you, but it's, it's good because we do everything for you and it's mostly hands off. We file the forms, we pay the taxes, in its accuracy guaranteed. You guys can absolutely still ac access this through a browser, iPad, iPhone, Android. And this is also available for wholesale discount through QBOA. So really super cool. So the biggest thing is, is does the accountant slash client want to be liable for mistakes or do you want Intuit to be liable? That will help kind of determine if you want to do it yourself or enhance. And of course, you know, obviously, um, uh, Budget is going to be another big one, right? Can you afford full service? But it's really beneficial, especially for those who do not want to mess with payroll. Okay. So those are QuickBooks Online subscriptions plus the payroll add-ons that are optional. Okay. We also have one other item that you can add as a client to QuickBooks Online Accountant, and that is called QuickBooks Self-Employed. Okay, what is QuickBooks Self-Employed? You guys may have heard it before, um, but this is going to be something that is for sole proprietors uh, who file a Schedule C, con so contractor, Schedule C. That's it. It's not for any other users other than Schedule C. So uh, they can sign up one user, and then they can invite their accountant or bookkeeper, which is you. It's for Schedule C businesses only. I'm talking real estate agents, Uber drivers, hairdressers, okay? Schedule C contractors who work for themselves that are self-employed. They can track businesses, uh, business expenses versus personal expenses. They can connect their bank accounts and their credit cards so that they're not having to do any data entry. So it's all, it's all um, automatic. And then they can track what's business versus what's personal. There is a super duper cool app. Um, a self, the, the QuickBooks self-employed app that they can install for free on their mobile device that has a GPS tracking thing on it. I say thing. It's a, it's a technical term, guys. Come on. <laughs> they can um, basically track their miles through the app without killing their battery, and then they can put, if, tra you know, 
traveling expenses is personal versus business related. So it's really super helpful for folks, again, are self-employed. They have the ability to estimate quarterly tax payments and pay them electronically if they want to. There's only three reports available in this particular program, the P&L, uh, profit and loss, your tax summary and tax details. Again, this is purely for you know, figuring out if the expenses that they paid were either personal or business, and of course income as well. There's no AR, there's no AP, there's no sales tax tracking, there's none of that, okay? Um, there's no payroll add-on option, this is not for people who have employees. Um, and again, there is also a wholesale discount through QBOA available for QuickBooks self-employed. So, if you guys have been hearing me correctly, then you can add QuickBooks Online Essentials, QuickBooks Online Plus, and QuickBooks um, Self-Employed to wholesale, okay? Simple Start is not an option to add to wholesale, unfortunately, but Essentials Plus or Self-Employed is, okay? Super cool stuff. Okay, so that's it for content. Since I spent the last 45 minutes talking your poor ears off, you guys want to see some QBOA? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into QuickBooks Online Accountant, and we're just going to kind of go through the motions of what I've already showed you, okay, just so you guys can see it real time. All right, so I'm going to jump in. So we already know that signing in is pretty simple, qbo.intuit.com. Okay, once you sign in, this is your dashboard. This is kind of what I've already talked about. A couple things I haven't covered through the slides is you can customize this dashboard, okay? So if you are somebody who doesn't use tax and this tax section is really obnoxious and you don't want to look at it, you can get rid of it. There is a small gear icon in the upper right-hand corner in the white section. You simply click on that and then you'll be able to remove tax-related items. So I just want to look at payroll and bookkeeping because those are the only kinds of clients that I work on. I don't work on tax stuff. Again, that's an example. This is a test file, so we've got all kinds of different stuff in here. Uh, but yeah, so you do have the ability to customize, okay? Um, make it a little bit easier. For you guys uh, who are into filtering your client list, you can absolutely click on the drop down here and you can filter. So if you only want to look at your bookkeeping clients, clients who have the QB meatball under QuickBooks, under bookkeeping, you can filter or maybe just your payroll clients. You only want to look at those guys. Or if you just want to look at clients that are in wholesale, you can absolutely do that. Or self-employed. Anybody who's self-employed, you can look at by, by filtering. If you have a really long list, you can also filter by searching for a client. So Jurassic Park gift shop. I can click on that there. Okay, cool stuff. So that's what that's for. Some other things I really want to point out before I move on is, is we talked about the client detail page. When I click on the name of the client, we get the client detail page. So a couple things I want to point out here just uh, some cool tidbits. You have the ability to add notes. These notes are not something that your client can see. This is something that only you as the firm can communicate back and forth between other firm members. Your clients cannot see this. So if I wanted to write pain in my butt, I could, right? Not that that's appropriate, but, you know, just trying to be funny. Okay, so pain in my butt. Um, you can also if it's really super important for you to be able to mark this as a, a pinned note, you can absolutely pin it. It'll show up over here on the right-hand side. If you want to edit the note, you can, or if you just want to say, you know what, this is not appropriate, we're going to just delete that, go right ahead. So notes would be something used for like, hey, please don't call this client before 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or on vacation until September or, you know, what have you. Whatever it is that you guys want to use that for, you can absolutely do that. Your clients cannot see it. And then kind of like the screenshot showed you, there are other sections up here at the top. So bookkeeping is going to be bookkeeping related. If they have payroll, they will also see another section here for payroll. And then, of course, the tax. Depending on what it is that they use, you'll be able to see those different sections. Shared documents is a cool little feature. Gives you the ability to save documents inside of QuickBooks Online Accountant that you and your client can access at a later time. There's no limit to how many you can have, but it allows you to download. So maybe not put their pain in the butt in this section because the client can see it, right? Well, not anywhere, right? Just kidding. But you and your clients can access these documents at a later time. So if I ever needed to come back and download these items, 
I could download them here. So, and this is going to be client specific. So again, this is Planet Pause Pet Shop and Boarding. So it's very specific to Planet Pause Pet Shop and Boarding. So this is all the documentation for this particular client. Cool stuff, right? You can also upload items here if needed. And then of course the client has their own special section that they can go to to access this data. So really super cool. It's again, a lot of information that's available for you guys at your fingertips and you're not going anywhere, right? You're just doing a couple clicks. You're, you know, you're looking through stuff, and so it's just really cool. Um, other things I wanted to show you that the screenshots really didn't do you justice was is without clicking on anything, there's other things that you can get access to. So, for example, if I were to just simply hover my mouse over the QB meatball, it gives me the version of QuickBooks that the particular client is using the last time that somebody signed in and the date. That's really super helpful, especially if you're trying to figure out on the fly what is it that they're using. Same thing goes for payroll. If they're using the payroll under status, there's that QB meatball. Enhanced, last time that they ran a payroll was 12-15. I think these guys are a little behind, but we won't tell that. No, I'm kidding. Um, again, these are all test files, so sometimes the data is a little wonky. Okay, um, items to review. So this particular client has 28 transactions that have not been accepted, so that tells you that their books are probably not up to date. Um, this particular client has a check without a payee. It's probably really important that they know where that money came from or that they sent it to, right? So you should probably check it out. So it's really important for you guys to be able to review these items, okay? Um, that's what that's there for. So that's super helpful. Um, one of the other things, too, I wanted to show you was is uh, when you utilize the notes feature, you'll be able to see that on the left-hand side of the client's name, the notes feature pops up. And so in this particular case, this client opens at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So again, we haven't really clicked on anything, but there's all this information that's available for you. It's so really super cool as far as, you know, being able to manage it in one place. I know for those folks who love desktop, you can't really do that. But here you can. I'm just being biased. <laughs> okay. Um, other things I want to show you guys, uh, wholesale billing. So if you guys are not familiar with wholesale billing, again, it is the ability for you as the accountant to pay for the subscription at a discounted price as long as it stays in your wholesale billing. Okay. Now, when you're creating a brand new client by clicking on the plus icon in the upper right hand corner and then you go to create client, it's going to walk you through if you want the client to pay or if you want to pay. Okay, so wholesale discount is where the firm gets billed and it's super cheap. It's 50% off the regular MSRP. So QuickBooks Online Plus is usually $50 a month. If you sign up for the client through QBOA, you would only have to pay $25 a month. Now, you can either say, all right, client, you pay me $25 a month, or you can have them pay you $30 a month. It's still cheaper than $50 or you can bundle it into your monthly fee that you pay them, or uh, excuse me, charge them. You don't pay them, they pay you. <laughs> um, and so on and so forth. So it tells you what the prices are if you want to do wholesale. Now, if you want to do direct to discount, that's totally fine. They'll get a discount, but it's only good for a year, and then they'll have to pay full price. So again, talking about you know what would be better for the client, it's really up to them. Um, direct to discount is, a, is also a pretty good it's also a pretty good discount, but it's only for 12 months. And then after that, they have to pay the full price. So again, discount, uh, wholesale is the way to go if you guys are able to do that. Um, and then, then just charge them whatever you want. So we give you guys a little bit of leg room as far as is, are you going to make money, bundle it into your prices, or whatever works best for you. But as you can see, there's only three options available for you to add or create through wholesale. Plus, essentials are self-employed. Like I said, Simple Start is not an option through here. The client will have to sign up themselves for Simple Start on the QuickBooks.com website, and then they can invite you as an accountant. Managing your account, uh, excuse me, your wholesale clients is pretty simple. If you go to the gear icon in the upper right-hand corner, it's located under your account. This is where you'll be able to see the list of all of your clients that are currently in wholesale, um, your credit card that's being charged, and all that good stuff. You'll have the ability to move existing clients that are not on wholesale to wholesale by simply clicking Move Clients to Wholesale here. And um, if there is a, a reasoning behind why they can't move them, it'll tell you, and then you just have to follow the steps, fix it, and then you can move forward. Something that, um, as an example of not being able to move a client to wholesale is, is if a client is annually billed, 
for QBO, they can't move to wholesale until they're changed back to monthly. Good news. Customer support can help fix that, so don't worry. But um, I think that's one of the only things. And, of course, Simple Start is not an option. But, uh, but, yeah, so that's how you can manage those. Other things that we've already talked about as well is your team page. So team is located over here on the left-hand side. Team. So these are all the folks that work for the firm. This is what it looks like. Pretty simple. You do have the ability to um, uh, sort the lists. So if you want to do alphabetical or you want to do it by job title or if you want to do it by status. Personally, I like to do it by status because then that way everybody that's active stays up on top, whereas everybody that's inactive stays on the bottom. So the way that it works is, is you can either add a new user by clicking on add user in the upper right, or you can simply click on, let's see, I want to click on Ryan if I want to edit current existing access. So this is where you would be able to mark statuses as inactive. So if they no longer work for the firm, you can mark them as inactive. You cannot delete. I just want to point that out. You're not able to delete users in QBOA, and the reason why is, is because it removes audit trails within the client's files. So if Ryan no longer works for the firm, we still want to keep his audit trail inside of QBO of what he did, okay, uh, for liability purposes, right? We don't want that to go away. So that's why you can only inactivate users. That's why it's really important to make sure that you guys are aware that um, that's why we inactivate. Okay. Um, firm administration and books. So this is where you can edit the access that they have for the actual dashboard, right? The dashboard itself of QBOA. If you only want them to access the, 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 your practice section where it's just the clients and the pro-advisor stuff, then you can have it set to basic. And then they can only see whatever clients that they've been given access to and their pro-advisor portal, and that's it. They can't access your books. The good news is, is the access of status still shows over here on the right-hand side every time you go to change it. So it'll always be available for you guys to see and double-check, hey, what do I want them to have access to? And then the last section is client access. Again, this is items or uh, clients that you want them to have access to. They don't have to have access to every single client, okay? You just check the boxes of the ones that they're working on, and then you click Save. And that helps kind of keep people, you know, directed at what they need to work on, and they don't need to look at all the other fluff. So it's really super helpful. So every, you know, every team member could have a different client list based off of who they're working on. So it's pretty helpful, in my opinion. I'm just biased, remember? <laughs> So that's the team page. Now, keep in mind, guys, that um, we're, we're coming up on our hour. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to, to start putting them in now so I can, I can answer them before we end um, in three minutes. Keep in mind, I have not covered every single benefit that's available for you out there in the online world. If you guys have other things, you know, there's, there's other uh, sites you guys can go to, qbtraininginvents.com, qbtraininginvents. Dot com gives you a list, and these ones are CPE certified, so you guys do have the ability to get CPEs if you want, um, but it does give you the uh, walking through um, um, more webinars of how to use QBO, how to use QBOA. There's even a cert prep, so if you guys want to take the certification but you're, you're kind of nervous, there's a four-hour certification prep that you can take um, if you're interested. All kinds of great stuff that's available for you. You can sign up. It's all free. There's virtual conferences, too, or there's in-person training. If there's in-person training near you, you can sign up. It's free. They give you food. I've been to them before. They're pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it really just depends on what it is you're looking for. But there's all kinds of benefits that are available for you guys to utilize within QBOA, right? And I've just barely scratched the surface, okay? If you guys have any other questions or if you need anything, don't hesitate to check us out. Call support if you have questions. If you have a, a special account manager that you work with, ask them questions. They might be able to help you too. That's what we're here for.